Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fierce and Free. I am so pumped to bring you guys today's episode. It's gonna be fire. I I worked so hard on this, but you know what's more important is that I learned so much and God revealed so much to me. And I already knew, you know, a little bit about what we're gonna be talking about today, but man oh man, the Lord just kept opening my eyes, opening doors for me to learn more about this topic. And I was like, man, I'm going to bring it this week for y'all. So I am so pumped. I am so pumped to share what God has shown me. It's I'm getting goosebumps. Okay. All right. So today we're going to be talking about a very, very prominent issue in today's world. And that is the music industry and how Satan has his hand in what we listen to. Just a heads up, guys, I am going to be using the KJV Bible for this episode because I needed the most accurate translation from Hebrew, Greek over to English. And if you have an NIV Bible, I suggest just looking up the KJV version if you're going to be reading along with me because the NIV version, it uh, NIV is not the most accurate depiction of what the bible says but it is the most easy to understand easy to comprehend version um kjv is definitely advanced i don't read kjv but if you like reading kjv that's amazing i have such a hard time reading kjv but for this we need to read kjv all right also before i get started i wanted to remind you guys if you want to support this ministry please head over to my patreon because even contributing one dollar a month helps so much Uh, Make sure to like, subscribe, and share with a friend if you enjoyed this episode and review it down below. Put that (laughs) five-star rating if you enjoyed this episode on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you're listening to. And please make sure that you stay tuned for the next few weeks because I have such exciting news that I'm going to share with you all. Um, Yeah, I've been been keeping it to myself for a few months now and holy guacamole, it's going to be amazing. So um, yeah, just make sure to stay tuned for the next few weeks. Uh, It'll be coming out later this month so (laughs) very excited okay also a friendly reminder if you ever want me to discuss a topic please message me on my instagram fierce and free the podcast i do keep it anonymous so don't worry uh for today's episode i'm actually doing a requested video by one of my viewers so i mean it works guys i listen i read your messages so uh make sure to throw me a message in my dms All right, so if you pay attention to the music industry, then you see this rise and fall of artists. And by that, I mean, you see how they're brand new to the to the industry. You know, they got everything going for them and, you know, extremely talented world at their fingertips. But recently we've seen the downfall of artists who display um, almost their allegiance to Satan. And I mean, we saw this with the Sam Smith Grammy Awards, how it looked like there was a satanic ritual happening on stage. If you watched that, uh, I just saw snippets on social media and it was it was disturbing and why the many Christian artists who were there at the Grammys did not stand up and walk out still surprises me. But, you know is what it is. Uh, We don't have to get into that. And not just Sam Smith. We had Travis Scott a few months back. I think it was about a year ago, I want to say. He held this concert where many non-believers came forward after the concert and said it felt like they were in the presence of demons, like they were in the midst of a demonic spirit. And I mean, during this concert, we saw that when people walked into the concert uh at the very opening of the gates there was this open-mouthed figure of travis scott and it looked quite a bit like a canaanite god moloch that was worshipped in the bible and the way they would worship this canaanite god is by putting their child their infant on the altar of moloch and the altar was so hot being fueled by the flames, it would burn their children alive. And that is how they worshipped this God. And we talked about this when we talked about Deborah and how the Israelites fell away from God and they started worshipping the Canaanites God. And one of them was Moloch. And, And so when these people who went to Travis Scott's concert walked through the entrance, it looked a lot like Moloch. And I'll put some pictures up here if you're watching on YouTube. 
of what I'm talking about. And during this concert, while Travis was playing his music, 10 people in the crowd passed away during his concert. He wasn't, he didn't stop his concert. He didn't pause his concert. He kept singing while people were D-Y-I-N-G-ing, okay? And the craziest part is that behind Travis, while these people were passing away, it said on the screen, see you on the other side. That's what it said. I will put up everything that I have here on the screen if you guys are watching on YouTube. So that was just Travis Scott. I'm going to keep going. We have a Demi Lovato who recently on her album cover, who's dressed in bondage, lying down on a cross. And the album's name is Holy F-U-C-K. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Beyonce in one of her song's lyrics says that she stuffs her menses with pages of the holy book. Yep, blasphemous. Absolutely disgusting. And let's not forget, I'm going to bring this one back. Okay, I'm going to bring this one back from a few years ago. I have not forgotten Ariana Grande singing. Lord forgive me for even saying this. This is such a a blasphemous thing to say. I, I don't even feel comfortable with it coming out of my mouth. But her song was called God is a Woman, which is it goes against everything we believe in. Horrible. It's horrible. These people are openly mocking it, mocking us right in front of our face. And the reason we know she's talking about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is because when she performed this song, I believe it was at the VMAs or Grammys, I don't know. She performed this song while reenacting the Last Supper. And yet after all of this, we still see unbelievers saying, Christians, you're crazy. They're not talking about you. Why do you have to make everything about yourself? You guys are paranoid. This is just good marketing. This is just for shock value. Friends, there are over 4,000 religions that are practiced here in this world. There are over 100,000 gods that are worshipped here in this world. And yet Jesus is the one they choose to mock. And you may ask why. And I'm going to tell you. It's because Satan, a.k.a. Lucifer was an angel of music. Did I just blow your mind? Because it blew mine when I was studying for this. So let's dive in to the scripture, okay? Ezekiel 28, 13 through 14, KJV. Thou, Lucifer, hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast on the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And don't worry, guys. I know if that was a little bit confusing, don't worry. I am going to be breaking it down so that we can further understand this. This verse was Ezekiel talking about the king of Tyre and while at the same time describing Satan from God's point of view. The Bible tends to have a lot of parallels. And that means when two or more lines of a Hebrew poem correspond closely with one another to make a point. And this is one of those verses. And the reason I know this is because my footnotes break this down. And I've said this before and I'm going to keep saying it in again. You need to get yourself a study Bible so that you can further understand the word. Because not all of us were gifted with the spiritual gift of knowledge. Me included. I do not have this gift. And that's why I suggest buy a study Bible because it is the best investment you will ever make. And if you don't have one, I always link them down below. All right, so let's break this verse down. So we see in this verse, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. A cherub or a cherubim are the highest ranking angels in God's kingdom, and they are the most powerful, beautiful, and wise spirit beings that God has ever created. These angels are known as the throne bearers of God. Lucifer was one of the highest ranking cherubims, and he was the guardian of the throne of God and of God's glory and holiness. 
In Ezekiel 28, 14, God also called him the anointed cherub that covers. And this illustrates the supreme responsibility that Lucifer held in God's kingdom. And when we break down this verse further, we see this. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day thou was created. Tablets and pipes are musical instruments. And we see in this verse that these musical instruments were ordained to Lucifer on the day he was created. And he more than likely led the heavenly worship that brought glory to God. You have to remember that music is a vital part in heaven and the throne of God. And we're going to use it when we get to heaven to worship God. If you sound like a dying cat here on earth, don't worry. When we get to heaven, we are going to have voices that are angelic and perfected and will be able to worship God to its full potential. So don't worry about it. I get it. I fully expect to have a six pack in heaven. I'm just waiting for my perfect body. (laughs) All right, so back to the text. Now that we kind of dissected everything, we know that Lucifer was a cherubim, which is one of the highest ranking official in God's kingdom. And this angel, this cherubim, was to bring honor and glory to God. And we know that Lucifer was ordained a musician the day he was created as one of the highest ranking angels, meaning that he was looked up to by all all of the other angels in the kingdom. We have to remember that Lucifer for eternity was ordained to bring honor and glory to someone other than himself. And because he was full of pride and arrogance, he did not like this. He could not fathom the idea of someone other than himself receiving admiration. He wanted the praise. He wanted the glory. He wanted people to worship him, not God. And because of this, it ultimately led to his downfall. And because he was a cherubim, all of the other angels looked up to him because he was the highest drinking angel in God's kingdom. So he was able to manipulate and talk one third of God's angels into turning and rebelling against God. And because of this, God sent Lucifer and one third of the angels who rebelled against him down to the pit of hell for eternity. We see this in Isaiah 14, 12, the downfall of Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, Now, this is what Lucifer would be saying in his heart. This is uh, from Lucifer's point of view. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Now, this always brings up the question when we discuss something theological like this, and that is, if God knew that Satan was going to rebel against him, then why did he create him? This is a great question, and it's brought up quite a bit. And I heard this explanation from Melissa Daughtry, and I think it is one of the best ways I've heard this explained. God wants genuine love from us, and to have this, God has to give us free will in order to choose him. So God gave you, me, and the angels free will to choose to love him, meaning that us and the angels get the option to either accept or reject God. And because Lucifer was an angel, he was also given this option. You still with me? I know this is kind of confusing, but let's get through this. God is all-knowing, so God knew that Lucifer was going to rebel. But because God is all-knowing, that means that he could see all the possible ways that this could have played out, where real love would be able to exist. The best way to describe this is the last scene in the movie Endgame. If you haven't seen this, I'm sorry. If you have, you'll understand what I'm saying. This, at this point in the movie, Doctor Strange looks through time to find any possible way to save the universe. And he says, yes, but there's only one way to save it. And that is 
if one specific person sacrifices himself to save the universe. Just like how God saw that there was only one way for us to have free will and real love. And that was to send one appointed man to die on a cross to save us. I'm sorry, I'm looking for an extra microphone so I can drop it. Are you kidding me? That blew my mind. All right, guys, now that you know what we've learned today, this prompts us to reflect on the profound spiritual power of music. You guys, it's so important to lean on God for discernment and to ask him for wisdom because remember, he gives wisdom generously when you ask for it. You need to pray about who you're allowing into your ears and your eyes because your body is a temple of the living God and we must use it for his honor and for his glory. Friends, we are getting down to the last days here on this earth before our savior comes back. And if this demonic entertainment doesn't wake you up, then I really don't know what will because even Satan knows that his time is almost up. Day by day, we're seeing more and more prophecies start to come to fruition and you cannot ignore the inevitable. It's time that we get our lives right with God because he loves us so much and he wants us to spend eternity with him. Listen, you guys, I want you to grow in your walk. I want you to receive those blessings quicker. I want you to have an abundance of peace to know that you know that you know that you're going to make it to heaven and that when you see Jesus, he is going to say, you are one of mine. Come on in. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. God, you are so good. Oh my gosh, this episode is just hot fire flames. And I am so excited for the word to get out and for people's eyes to be open to what's truly happening right in front of us, Lord God. Lord God, you are amazing. You are incredible, God. You are so holy, Lord. And I am sorry that these artists are openly mocking you. Lord, I ask that you bring them to repentance for the blasphemous things that they've said against you, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I ask that you help these viewers right now in the name of Jesus. Help them to see, to use wisdom and discernment, to grow in their walk, to say no to what's trendy, to say no to listening to these artists, to not allow those artists' music to come into their household and into their hearts, Lord God. Thank you so much for all that you do, Lord. Help us stay strong in the spirit. Help us grow in our walk and help us to continue to seek you every single day, Lord God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alrighty, guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share with a friend if you enjoyed. And to make sure that you stay tuned for the next couple of weeks because I have some big news I'm so excited to share with you all. But as always, please remember that you are fierce and free because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, everyone, have a good week. Bye.